As you see and as you know, there are corrections even in the bull market and these corrections can be 20, 30 or even 40%. This is absolutely normal. There are traders and influencers, crypto bros and Twitter gurus and whatnot. You don't really know who to trust when it comes to whether a dump is coming or not. So in this video, I'm gonna give you eight tools that is completely data focused and can help you to determine whether a market is overheated or it is time to buy. We're gonna look at what is slow bleeding and what is a flash crash. We're gonna look at funding rates. We're gonna look at open interest. We're gonna look at fear and greed index. We're gonna look at RSI heat maps. We're gonna look at ETF inflows and much, much more. So it's definitely worth staying to the end. There are a billion ways to make money in crypto and I'm on a mission to find them all. My name is Fafa and if you follow my content, you know that I share everything I find. So if I make money, you can make money too. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I know we always say this, but subscribe, you will not regret it. If you wanna make it in this bull market, it is the time. It's a click of a button, but can literally change your life. And if you're returning, smash the like button. We bring you the best offer in the world. So let's get into the video. What is the difference between a flash crash and a slow bleed? And there is a big difference and it's very, very important to be able to identify. So if you look at this chart, you will see that when Bitcoin made a new all-time high, 73,700, it gradually bleeded down back to like, like $61,000. And that is the slow bleed that we're talking about. Basically the chart is bleeding out for about five, six, seven days, but this can take weeks or even months. On the contrary, if you look at this chart, you will see that as we are pushing to new highs, new highs, suddenly without any indication, we get a flash crash that can be as big as 14, 15, or even 20% within a matter of hours. So the difference between the two is slow bleed is slow, might take days or weeks and flash crashes are usually happen because of bad news or because a liquidation, a liquidation event, liquidity hunt, and then a chain of events unfold and we get a 20% week that basically gets eaten up and we make new highs as you see it here as well. Now here's what is important to remember. If you are seeing a slow bleed, you do not want to just blindly ape because a slow bleed again can take weeks. However, on the other hand, if you see a 15, 20% dump in the bull market on a coin like Bitcoin without any major news, for example, an exchange going bankrupt or something like or leg legislation is coming out, then you are more likely to, to profit from buying into these dips, especially if you buy spot. So this can be a great opportunity for a DCA strategy, dollar cost average. Second thing we have to talk about is funding heat maps. So when you do leverage trading or perpetual leverage trading on any exchange, you have have to pay something called the funding fee. And that basically helps the market to equalize. And if there are way too many long positions, the long position holders will need to pay a certain fee based on the position size that they have opened to the short holders and the other way around. If there are way too many short holders, so more shorts than longs, they will have to pay a certain fee on their position size to the long position holders. Now, what can this tell us and how we can use it? If you look at this heat map, which is on coinglass.com, if you want all these links that I'm gonna talk about in this show, you can go in the description. I wrote a complete thread outlining every links and everything that I use to identify these dips. So you can click on the link in the description, go to my profile. If you're there, smash the follow. I promise you, you will not regret it. I also have a trading channel where I trade and teach you how to trade every single day. Check it out as well, also down in the description. So here's how you can read this heat map. So as you look here, you will see a lot of colors and whatnot. Don't get intimidated, it's not that difficult. I'm gonna explain it in a second. So down here on the bottom, first of all, let's start with the APR, which is annual percentage rate. What this means is, as I explained, you have to pay a fee to hold a position. This fee is usually counted every eight hours and you have to pay it every eight hours based on the position. If you hold a $10,000 position and if the funding rate is 1%, you have to pay 1% every eight hour. Now that gets deducted from your account automatically. Now, what this shows us is that if the conditions on any given date, at any given time, will not change, meaning there will be the same amount of long positions, the same amount of short positions, there'll be the same price, if that continued for a year, this is how much you would have to pay in fees if you held a long position. If the funding rate is negative, shorts pay longs. If the funding rate is positive, longs pay shorts. That simple. So what this tells me, for example, you look at BTC here. If I go to BTC on the 11th of March at 9 a.m., 92% was the funding rate. That means that if the conditions that were, were on the 11th of March at 9 a.m. did not change for an entire year, I would pay 90% premium 
on my long. If I have a $10,000 worth of long position, a size, position size, $10,000, then I have to pay $9,000 if I hold it for a year. This is just a great representation of how the market is balanced. And if the funding rates are very high, that means a leverage flush or a flash crash can be due. So for example, as I said, the yellow indicates that there are way too many long positions and the purple indicates that there are way too many short positions. Then that here on the side, you can see the coins and on the bottom, you can see the dates. More green the chart, the more neutral the market is. So if, for example, you can look here and you see that on March 5th at 1 a.m. and 9 a.m., uh, there were a lot of, lot of, lot of long positions open. So the funding rate at some coins, for example, if you look at Pepe, the funding rate on Pepe was 211% APR. Absolutely insane. So if you look at the date, March 5th, and you look at the chart, you see that there was on March 5th at 3 p.m., this time, the same same time that we saw the heat map on, was a 15% flash crash. And then this is exactly what I explained a second ago, that this is just a leverage hunt. They hunted all these, uh, all these long positions. As you see, on March 5th at five o'clock, the funding was neutral. That means funding reset. That means that the long positions were basically liquidated or closed. And since the funding is reset, more neutral, more green, we can start a recovery. So as you see here, the recovery has happened and went uh, up, the price went up again. So basically how you use it is that you want to look for the yellow tiles all around the place. You wanna come in here every day, just check how we stand, whether we are completely yellow or whether we're completely purple and take a decision based on that. If you see that for a couple of days, we are getting more yellow, this is like a wave. So you see it's more yellow, then we become more green and then more yellow, more green. So more, you see yellow is coming in again on Pepe, for example, the fun funding is up again. Uh, so as you see more yellow coming in around across the board, you want to pay attention to it and you want to start taking profits, especially if you match it with all the other indicators that I'm going to talk about now. Next up is open interest. Now, open interest just shows us the number of positions that are open on any given asset. For example, if you look at Coin Glass's futures open interest, this is the BTC futures interest. You can select ETH, SOL, DOGE, uh, Ripple, and whatever that is. And down here, you see the exchanges where the positions are open. So for example, if you look at Binance here on Bitcoin, there is 117,000 Bitcoin worth of positions opened right now. That means that 117 positions are open. It's not 117 accounts, it's not 117 anything, it's 117 positions are open. Whether it's long or short, we don't know that exactly. If you subscribe, you will get that data as well and you can see the liquidity heat maps. But the basic idea here is that this is the amount of position that is open. And that can tell us more positions are open, people more likely to trade and therefore the market might have an imbalance that needs to be filled therefore get a flash crash or a slow bleed down. You can see several things here. You can see the amount that is outstanding. You can see the rate. You can see the open interest change on one hour, four hour, and 24 hour. And this is exactly what I wanted to talk about because if you see that the open interest change is negative in the 24 hour time frame, that means that people closed their positions or got their positions liquidated because there is less positions on the 24 hour time frame. But if you see that on the one hour and the four hour time frame, the number is going up, you can see that a recovery might be happening. So the flash crash that you saw is actually being bought up. If you look at Doge, for example, on today's date, you will see that the open interest change in 24 hours is actually down 10% uh, on some exchanges, 9%, 7%, 10% some exchanges, but on the four hour, it is up to two, one and a half, five percent 5%. So that might indicate that the recovery is starting. There's another site that you can use called Coinalyze. They show you the dollar value of the open interest. So for example, on here, what you see is that there is $19 billion worth of Bitcoin positions uh, opened. Currently, you can see it as a graph and you can see it listed here as well. It's basically showing the same thing, but in a different way. And you can also correlate that to the Bitcoin price on the chart very, very nicely. Talking about charts, guys, as I said, I have a trading channel that you want to follow. It's a 100X club. Check it out. I teach you how to trade. I bring you daily trading off a live trading and whatnot. Link in the description. Check it out. Next indicator is the fear and greed index. Now, you probably have heard this a billion times. 
Let's talk about it a little bit. So this is the fear and greed index, what basically shows whether the market is at fear or whether the market is greedy. And it's called an index because it takes a lot of factors into consideration when making up this number. So as you see, the numbers go from zero to 100, from zero to 25 is extreme fear, meaning the market is very afraid to, to the people are very afraid to buy on the market or participate in the market. 25 to 50 is simple fear, and from 50 to 75 is greed, and from 75 up to 100 is extreme greed. There is a Twitter profile as well that actually posts this every single day, so or actually a couple of times times a day so you can see the fear and greed index again it is calculated from a lot of things so if you go down here uh, current volatility momentum social media post service bitcoin dominance google trends and a lot of other things but what is very interesting in this is that whenever fear and greed is at the extremes market seems to react so i actually made a tweet about this and i said the only time in history when we had fear and greed index above 50 for six months straight was between 2020 october and 2021 april so if you look at this this was the only period when we had the green means that it's above 50, right? So this was the only time when we were in green for six months. And now we are at this period as well when we are in uh, greed territory as well. So if we are in greed and an extreme greed for a substantial amount of time, the market will correct and these corrections will happen. It's also important to keep in mind though that through the whole bull market, the fear and greed index is above 50 and eventually goes down below when we arrive to the bear. So the fact that the fear and greed index does not go below 50 doesn't mean that we cannot buy. It just means that the market is a little bit overheated. And when we're getting to levels like uh, 80, 90, as we saw in the previous weeks, you have to think that the market will correct. And as you see here on the chart, it's a very good representation. As you see here in uh, 2023 February, there was a 22% correction after we hit 62. Then in uh, June, July, we had a 20% correction after hitting about 69.70. Then in 2024, January, we were up at 76 and we went down all the way to 48. And then now we were up at over 90, which is extreme, extreme, extreme uh, greed. That, and we came down to 74 so far. So you see that the market reacts to these swings as well and you can take advantage of it. But that's not the only way to take advantage. You can also take advantage of the dip by by buying the dip. I know it can be intimidating and can be difficult, but this is why it's important for you to find great projects. And that said, I wanna introduce you to today's sponsor, which is TensorSpace. Now, TensorSpace or TPU is revolutionizing the space. They are a new up and coming Deepin project. We talked about Deepin a million times and I believe that Deepin can be very big in this bull market. And TensorSpace is creating something within Deepin that actually does make sense and have great potential. So what they do is that they provide an infrastructure, a platform where people can contribute their PU or processing units, for example, GPU, for companies to train AI and therefore contribute to machine learning. Now, it requires a lot of machine power to teach an AI. As I said, with the internet bandwidth as well, when we talked about Getgrass, it's the same scenario. If you wanna teach something to AI, or if you wanna work with machine learning, it requires extreme amount of power. And that's exactly what TPU is solving. So the main problem here, as we've talked about this on the channel a couple of times, is that there are not enough processing units. That means that there's simply there is not enough supply as the demand grows. So the demand is growing exponentially as AI comes in, as robotics comes in, but there is not enough manufacturing, there is not enough supply. So what TensorSpace is doing that they help you use your own unused processing unit, for example, GPU, contribute it to their network so they can resell that uh, in the decentralized network for companies to train their AI. Now, the best part about this, obviously, is that you earn tokens while doing that. This is the whole idea behind Deepin, which is decentralized physical infrastructure. You provide your unused resources and you earn tokens. In this case, you will earn TPU but I'm gonna talk about a token in a second. So if you go into that website, you will see they say a decentralized platform for AI and ML computer, machine learning computer, run and fine tune AI models without code, utilize, this is important, AI models without code, we're gonna talk about it, but the basic idea here is that you can, we will be able to create and train AIs without having to have all these crazy resources without a code, utilize GPUs, TPUs and LPUs, computational power on a decentralized market space. You scroll down here, they explain their mission, they explain their solution, and they explain why
why they are different from, for example, render. But I'm gonna give you a hint. They're different because they're not just working with GPU, they have a much broader scale. When you're working with GPUs, you can lend that to designers and specific group of people and institutions that want to work or need GPUs to process 3D rendering and whatnot. What TensorSpace does is a much larger scale using different PUs. This is why I mentioned processing units for different computation that they need to do. What is absolutely insane is that they have major partnerships. So for example, they partner with Nvidia and they partner with BitTensor. Tau, you probably heard about Tau, which is literally one of the leading AI blockchains out there, or projects out there. But what is very interesting is by partnering there, they provide the AI infrastructure and they provide the computational power that you need to actually create an AI and they had a lot of other stuff. I invite you to read the white paper where you can find every information. This is also why I invested, so I read it through. Uh, it's absolutely interesting. It has AI, it has deep, and it has the decentralized infrastructure. It has blockchain in it. They partner with Nvidia, they partner with Tao. I mean, again, it's just me, not financial advice, whatever I say here, but this is the reason why I invested. Let's talk about the token. If you go onto their website, you can come here, which will take you to the Uniswap page where you can actually swap the token. But as a chartist, I like to look at the chart. Although, as I said, it's a very early stage project, so there's not much to analyze here. You can still see the market cap, which is 65 million, if you click on the co uh, token address. So here you can see it's evenly distributed, so there is 9,400 holders and not one wallet holding 30% of the token supply. So this is not a red flag for me. Uh, liquidity is 1.53 million. Again, it is a small project. Very important to say, as I said, I'm holding a bag. I'm not gonna sell the bag. This is one of my DGEM plays for the long run. AI, blockchain, Deepen, everything is in there. If they can pull it off, I think this can be a very good play. Next up is the MVRV Z-score. Now, the MVRV stands for uh, market value, realized value, and then the Z-score stands for the deviation, which is the orange line here. This will show us if the market is oversold or overbought, just like the RSI, but it takes it from an from on-chain, so it's based on on-chain data and it's been extremely, extremely accurate on the higher timeframes. So I don't really wanna deep dive into how it works. To be honest, for two reasons. Number one is because it would be a long video. Second, it is extremely, extremely complicated. So I'm still not entirely sure how it pulls the data, but the basic idea here is that it has a market, Bitcoin has a market value, which is the market cap, and it has a realized value, which is taken from chain every single time someone makes a transaction. So it takes the value on that second and the deviation is the Z-score and that's kind of how it calculates uh, this graph. What is relevant in this chart is every time when the orange line goes into the red territory, the market is overheated and therefore signals a major, major pullback. And every time the yellow line or orange line touches the green area down on the bottom, it signals a reversal and a potential bull market. And it's been extremely, extremely accurate. So if you look at this 2016, it started, it touched the green, and then it went all the way up in 2017. December was the absolute top, which was the top of the bull market, and it crashed down. So if you started layering out based on this, you have done very, very well. The same in 2013-14 and the same in 2021. We literally just touched 2021 February. We touched the top and that was basically the top. So if you look at the chart here, this would have been 2021 February, which was literally the top. Obviously, we had a little bit of push, about another 10% here before a 50% correction. And then, of course, we had the pump again. But you basically, even then, the pump took it to 20%. Uh, more from the place you would have sold in 2021 February and you would have basically saved yourself over a year of struggling of whether it's up and down. This is an absolute game changer for me. I am going to use this when it comes to getting out in this bull market. So once this reaches the red territories again, I will start laying out of my major, major portfolio. Next up is the RSI heat map. Now you probably have heard about RSI, which is Relative Strength Index, but there is a heat map for that so you can see how the overall market is doing with all the coins. So if you look at this chart, and again, just as a reminder, there is a link in the description for my Twitter thread, so you have all these links in there. Um, so you, you go, come to this website and you will be 
see in the crypto market RSI heat map, that's the whole crypto market. You see the four hour, you can filter for one hour, you can filter for 15 minutes. I would recommend you look at least 24 to 24 hours to get the bigger picture. Um, and if, for example, now I look at this on the top, it even says overbought, strong, weak, or oversold. So if we see the coins get into the oversold or weak category, that means that the strength of the movement is weakening and therefore a reversal is potentially going to happen um, uh, and the other way around. So if we see coins up in the overbought uh, territory, that means that they're way too hot and therefore correction is due and the same way goes for the bottom. So basically what you wanna see, if you look at the four hour chart, for example, most of the coins are down in the, um, in the oversold category. So we could expect either a short term bounce or even a complete reversal from these levels. And then you, if you look at the weekly, you will see a little bit different picture. You see that most of the coins are, or some of the coins are up in the overbought territory and some of them are in neutral states. So we still need some cooling down. The way to use this, again, if you look at the weekly and everything is up here as it will be at the top of the bull market or and then the market is very overheated, you might wanna start taking some profits. And if you look at the four hour and you see that most of the coins are down uh, maybe 15, 20% and they are down on the oversold category, you might wanna start leathering back in. So it's very important, I do not use RSI heat maps for trading, but they're not that bad when it comes to predicting grand scheme of things when we're looking at the market as the overall market. So the reason why I use it or the reason why I look at it, again, if I want to identify the 24 hour or the weekly outlook for the entire market, that gives you a great picture. If you look at the Bitcoin price here as a comparison, you will see why I don't use it, for example, for trading. It's not always accurate. So you see here the RSI is up at 80, 85. Market still doesn't really have a major dump uh, it comes down here later much much later after pumping to all uh, to new highs and then when you're, you're in the bottom it got it completely right it bounced from the bottom then here again you are up at like 80 and the market doesn't really drop for another you know another two months and then eventually drops goes to the bottom and then from there and moves on here it was at the top RSI was up at 90 and the price made another 100%. So you gotta watch out for this. I think it's interesting to look at as the overall market. So if you wanna look at the RSI heat map as the overall market on the weekly level, it can give you a great indication on where the market is, but I would necessarily not use it as a, uh, using it for specific coins or for trading. Next up is ETF inflows. Everybody's talking about it, so I want you to understand it once and for all. ETF inflows are money coming into the ETF, the Bitcoin ETFs to buy Bitcoin. So these are settled at T plus one or T plus two, and that means that from the time we get the numbers, the inflows into dollar inflow into the Bitcoin ETF, from that time about a day or two till that actually gets purchased, that Bitcoin or that amount of Bitcoin actually gets purchased. So what you see here in this table is, you see the dates all around and you see all the ETF providers here and you see the total inflows listed here. So for example, you see that BlackRock's IBIT um, ETF had 165 and it says here USM means it's US dollar in the millions. So it had 165, almost 166 million dollars worth of inflow into the BlackRock's um, Bitcoin ETF and it adds everything up together. And even though <laughs> BlackRock had a day, great day, uh, it is still down at 85. The total inflows is still down at $85 million. Now the way to use this again is that if you see inflows coming in hot, for example, here you see we had $418 million worth of inflows on the 24th of March. If you look at the chart, it will show you that we had a nice 10, 12% bounce from that level. So actually the ETF inflows can tell you or predict where the market might potentially go or if we are going to get a relief rally. Next up is gonna shock you, but it is Coinbase app ranking. Yes, right, the application, the Coinbase application on your phone. Now the ranking of the Coinbase application on the app store has marked the top. So whenever Coinbase got to number one was literally the top for the crypto market. So now there is a Twitter page for this as well. It literally monitors the Coinbase app ranking. It gives you where it stands on the, 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 the list. As of now, you see among all apps, it stands as 281 and among finance apps, it stands as 22. So when you see this 
recovering and when you see it coming up to number one spot among all applications we were at 49 this bull market already so we really got to pay attention this thing can literally jump you know 50 to 100 place in a day and this signals that retail is coming into the market and when the retail really arrived and when they put all their money in that's usually when the market tops so this is also just another indication to look out for you can find his twitter profile in the thread as well um, this is something that i look at every week and there is one more gem that i really want to give you this has not much to do with timing the top and understanding where the top is but it is a great tool to look at and that is the altcoin season index now everybody's waiting for altcoin season right so it's good that our memes are running it's good that bitcoin is running but when is my altcoin bag running fefe so it's a complete legit question and there is a, a site that tries to time the altcoin season based on a lot of indicators so the calculation here is pretty simple if 75% of the top 50 coins perform better than Bitcoin in a 90 day period, then we are in an altcoin season. Now you have to deduct from the top 50 coins, you have to deduct the stable coins and coins backed by gold and stuff like that. But other than that, this is basically it. So right now it is the top 50, 49% of the top 50 perform better than Bitcoin in the past 90 days. So this is not altcoin season just yet, but this can be a great indication for you to look at as well. When we get to the 75 region, you will see as for example, if you scroll out here, you will be able to see in 2021, we got to the 75 and this is literally when the altcoin season really picked up and all skyrocketed. So this is a great tool to look at. Um, I'm also, this is not something to check every single day, but this can give you a great indication when you can rotate from Bitcoin to altcoins. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate you for watching through this video. If you like this content, please smash the like button. Obviously subscribe to the channel. Follow me on X, I answer everybody. If you ping me there, I interact with you there. And also, if you have any thoughts on this content or if you want me to look at next, let me know in the comment section. I reply to every single comment. Thanks for watching again and I'll see you in the next one.